Alrighty, and welcome back to another video. In this one, I will be creating the waves or the ripples effect to the water material that we've been working on. So, if you look right here, or like uh, along the edges and stuff, what we want to happen is to create a kind of like the water bouncing off of the wall right here. And we want it to happen all the way around it or anything like that. So what I want to do is I'm actually uh, going to create another material and I'm this right here is going to be a testing material. So I'm just going to call this test. So for now on anything that we have to test out or anything like that I want to use this material for that. But I want to create an instant of that also. But yeah go over then I want to add this to the water material because we actually ain't going to be working with the water right now. It will be here in a minute but just not right now. So to go back to where the test is and Okay, this right here is actually where the distance fields comes into play that, that we had to activate on the first video. So, from right here, just create a, just type in distance field. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, it's going to be distance to nearest. Yeah, distance to nearest surface is what it's called. Alrighty. And we want to kind of clarify how, what the distance is. So we want to get the distance anywhere from 0 to 100 units. Well, 100 to start out with anyway. So I'm going to divide. Divide that, I want to create a parameter for this. So I'm going to call this an shoreline. Scale. Alright, and I'm just going to add this as 100 for now. We might change that, but I think 100 is a pretty good value to start off with. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to saturate this. Um, actually, I probably don't need to saturate it. But if we look at, put it into the base color right there, and then if we look at the texture or whatever, you can see that if like we'll be using this as kind of like a, a mask, and if you use mask, any you'll know that anything th that is white is actually what's going to be masked. But this right here, you can see the entire landscape is actually white, and then what's black is going to be around the corners, and we don't really want that. So what you have to do is you have to kind of just flip, just flip flop that a little bit, and I'm going to add a one minus node. Alrighty, so yeah, just add a one minus node right there, and now you should see that it's flip-flopped yes okay now you can see right here that it is flip-flopped and another thing too um, you can see that it's all gray and it's supposed to be solid black and the reason for that is is it's just too close to the surface below it but we will actually create another function later on not on this video probably but later on that mask is just the X and Y axis so it is not yet the value up underneath it so you won't have that effect going into place when we actually do the waves but that's for another video but for now I'm just going to focus on actually creating the waves so go to the distance or well, yeah go to this function and I'm going to actually um yeah actually I'm going to go ahead and add the waves effect to it so the way you do this is we actually have to add the time node to it and the way the time node works is it creates a uh, pretty much anything that is like I'm just going to create it and just try to explain it the best I can after just add a time node in alrighty and pretty much a time node is, is the best way I can explain it is it's kind of like a delay if you was working with blueprint it 
pretty much looks the exact same, but anything that's affected by the time node, let's say that you wanted the, it to be like one second, you could, it'd be anything that would, the time node would be affected would be like one second behind everything else. So it would kind of make it like a wave effect. But yeah, I'm going to multiply this. And I will actually show you exactly what this does here in a minute. Um, I want to add in, uh, this right here is going to be the waves amount. Yeah, if you multiply this by number, however, whatever number you get, that's going to be the amount of uh, ripples that it's creating. So just go ahead and add, I'm going to add four of them for now, and then a sine node. Alrighty, and I'm going to multiply this by this. So pretty much anything that the distance field is collecting, which is going to be the white mass that it uh, collected before, that's what's going to be affected by the waves. And this right here is the, pretty much the only thing that the wave effect is doing. And if you just plug this right here up too, let's see what happens. Okay, yeah, you can see that it kind of have this uh, effect right here. Um, that is pretty much what the effect does. Now, if you just add this to that, then it really doesn't do much. Yeah, it just kind of flickers only because that it's, that everything is pretty much being affected by it. But if you create this into it, then only, then it's taking account to the distance to near surface. But if you multiply those together, then it's only going to create that little bit of effect. And like I said before, it's really close to the surface. Um, actually, um, actually, I do not know why it's still doing that. Um, it shouldn't do that here in a minute, though. Uh, let's Alright, let's see. Another thing too, this wave is way too fast. I want to divide it. To create a parameter, and I'm going to call this ripples speed. Alrighty, and just apply that. Um, it's at zero right now, so I'm going to do like four maybe. So it needs to be like four times slower than what it was. And that's the effect that we get on that. Um, one more thing too, I think I know why it's not, it's doing that all over. Go right here to where, click on the plane that you have, and select, and hit distance. And what it says affect distance field lighting, turn that off. Um, dang, it's still doing it, ain't it? Um, let's see. I'm not really sure why it's doing that now, because it wasn't doing that a minute ago. Um, that'll be alright for now. We'll kind of adjust everything once we get in the water material. But yeah, that's pretty much the whole function for that. So I'm going to take this and copy and paste it. And then go back over to the water. I'm going to paste it within the water right there. And that, and I'm going to plug this into, you know what, one more thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to multiply. Um, not multiply, divide it. Divide it by, and this right here is going to be the intensity of the ripple. So I'm going to call this ripples 
intensity. So just plug that up to this. And another thing too is if you look at it, you plug that up and you, then you go back over to the to it and look at it right here. Then add that back to it. Um, not really sure why it's doing that. Uh, let me look at something. Um, let's see if I saturate this. Let's see what it'll do. Okay, yeah. Surprisingly, how much something that simple will affect it. But, and you can see right here, this is not at all what we want. Um, let's see, what did I do? Um, well, first off, the ripple's intensity is at zero, and we don't want it to be completely at zero. So, I'm going to do it at, um, I'll do it at two. See what happens. If I ain't mistaken, I think the higher the value is, the less intensity it is. I think that's the way that's going to work. Wait for it to compile. Okay, yeah. Now you can see there's a little bit of a issue right here. You can see this line going across and the reason for that is is the refraction value. Um, if we go down to where the water material is we added a 1.33 to the refraction to begin with, and it was a pretty decent number. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to add that same number into it. Let's add that into the refraction to it, and then let's see what we got going. Right, and you can kind of see that that effect went away. But the main thing is that we act, we have the ripples into the water. Now you can see that this is not the same as a normal map, but it still gives the effect of like actual ripples in the water. But if you go down here and look, that there is no ripples. It's just kind of it kind of reflects the line, which is pretty much the same thing that normal map does too. It's just, I mean, it still kind of gives off a pretty cool little effect to it. Yeah, and if you take some an object and you know move it, the ripple stays with it, and, and all that good stuff too. Alrighty. Now this right here is pretty good, but if you look at something, let's let's take this right here and. Make the the collision presets at no collision. But so if we press play, and you can see that the character does not create any ripples. And the reason for this being that, uh, yeah. Now the reason why it's like this is the materials cannot get the character's instance or is. The, like a blueprint is not the same thing as a mesh. Even if it has a mesh in it, it's not the same thing at all. So what I'll have to do is I'm actually going to have to get a reference to the character to put into the material. But I'm not going to do that on this video. I'm going to wait until the next video to do that. Only because it's kind of, it's not really a long process. It's just I don't want to make this video longer than it has to be. But I'm going to go ahead and end this video right here. And in the next video, I will be implementing the character, the actual ripples around the characters to kind of create the same effect this right here has on it. So, well, I, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end it here, and I'll just see y'all in the next one.